Welcome to the Did Nothing Wrong podcast, where we try to cut through the noise and help you make sense of the chaotic information space around us. I'm Griff Somke. And I'm Jay McKenzie. In this episode of the Did Nothing Wrong podcast, MAGA gets mad at the DHS, the GOP has a narrative about the Biden crime family they'd like to sell you, Tucker's back on the air, and Texas Republicans won't denounce the neo-Nazi beliefs of a mass shooter. If you like what you're hearing, please give us a rating and a review on the app that you're listening on. Be sure to subscribe at didnothingwrongpod.com to get our content straight into your inbox. All of our work is free, but we're extremely grateful for paid subscriptions and donations that ensure that we can keep doing this important work. Thank you. Before we get started, just a quick bit of housekeeping. We're doing a survey to see what you'd like more of on the Did Nothing Wrong pod, and we're giving out stickers if you respond. We'll also be drawing three names at random for your choice of a free shirt or a coffee mug. Just go to our website at didnothingwrongpod.com and look for the survey tab at the top. It's that easy. Thanks again for your support, and now, on with the show. It's time for a bit of news on the fake outrage front. A couple weeks ago, Brent Bazell, the head of the conservative watchdog group Media Research Center, he did the rounds uh, supposedly after his group uncovered an outrageous plot that led to headlines like this one at the New York Post. DHS funded college program linking Fox News, NRA, RNC to neo-Nazis, which I guess sounds kind of bad. And the the chart that he ends up criticizing in his article and that he talks about on these various right wing shows is not particularly helpful for me. It, it has four levels uh, on a pyramid of far right radicalization. The first tier is normie conservatives like Fox News, the Heritage Foundation and the RNC. The higher up the pyramid you go, the more extreme the groups get with Group 2, including MAGA, Breitbart, and Infowars, among others. Then you get to the white nationalists and neo-Nazis in Tier 3, and the fourth tier are essentially the same, except the ones who are explicitly violent extremist groups who want to do actual terrorism. So, to be clear here, radicalization does occur on the right, and there are people who move through the right-wing spaces until they end up in the most extreme group. It does happen. Preventing that from happening is a good thing. It is, of course, very difficult to predict, and knowing that it happens doesn't mean you can prevent it. Anyway, the right took this chart to mean DHS thinks all Republicans are Nazis. They hate you. They hate your family. How dare they? And, of course, it's Brent Bazell doing this media tour, and I think the whole thing is particularly funny coming from him. Oh, why is that? <laughs> well, his own son was charged for his involvement in the January 6th insurrection and riots. No. <laughs> he was actually <laughs> photographed on the Senate floor, and he was later charged with disorderly conduct entering a restricted building and obstructing an official proceeding. You can go Google his name. You will see him very clearly standing on the Senate floor. There are multiple shots. Can't miss him. <laughs> I think his actual case is still pending, but I guess good luck beating those pictures that are clearly you. What chapter of Brent Bazell's parenting book was this again, just out of curiosity. <laughs> yeah, right-wing radicalization isn't real, says the head of the Media Research Center. And like you said, just don't Google where his son was on January 6th. Yeah, it's not as if he just woke up one morning and decided, I'm going to storm the Capitol. There are, no. Again, with each of these people, there are a series of events. Mm -hmm. And the, the outrage over this story, it kind of came and went within a week or so. As these things often do, we're always on to the next outrage. Again, another potential podcast name we could have used. <laughs> on um, to the next outrage yep. podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you, in particular, you did notice one person that you felt like we needed to right. highlight. Because it's, it's a little ironic that he's taken such an issue with this DHS radicalization pyramid. So why don't you explain? Sure. I saw... 
an article in The Federalist written by a completely ridiculous man who shall forever be known by the anti-SJW character he used to play on YouTube called Prog Dad. And he wrote this article in The Federalist wherein he pointed out that some DHS funding went to a supposed anarchist who did a presentation where he used this pyramid of right-wing radicalization. Uh-huh. Anarchist. That's just another way of saying Antifa, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, it sure is. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to uh, be... Yeah. yeah, I'm amazed that, that Prague Dad, or his, as you may see his bylines by his Christian name, Owen Lenahan. But again, Prog Dad. Mm-hmm. I'm amazed that he's still around and people are taking him seriously. But he is, and they are. It seems that Prog Dad is, is cosplaying as a serious researcher now, and the Federalist is paying him something to do it. And Prog Dad has made this entire shtick about the fear and danger of left-wing extremism and violence. And we're not saying left-wingers can't be violent, but what we are saying is that Prog Dad is not the one who should be giving us this lecture. No, no, he is not. Okay, so who is Prog Dad? Well, this story honestly doesn't sound real or believable, but it is. So here we go. I'll do my best. (laughs) <laughs> Prog Dad, a.k.a. Owen Lenahan, tried to be a real academic who studied far-left extremism, but it didn't work out. He published an article in Quillette supposedly tying journalists to Antifa, and he said they're all colluding together and all these awful things are happening. He said, Antifa! Yeah. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. He said this account, that account, follow each other on Twitter, have retweeted the same article... So he threw some darts at a board, hinted at a broad conspiracy, and used a bunch of innuendo to make it sound really horrible. Lots of concern, very little meat on that bone. Prog Dad's Quillette article was really more about how much he hates the left and he thinks journalists are bad, and Antifa are worse than Nazis. Oh, and by the way, he only pals around with fascists and harassment trolls on the internet because the left is worse. So it's all in the spirit of the greater good. Yay him. Except... Oh, by the way, Lenahan was also running this fake social justice warrior account on YouTube named Prog Dad, and he was using it to cosplay as a progressive woke Antifa leftist, but he had a bunch of overt fascists on the Prog Dad show. He was elevating the worst characters online and calling the left's concerns about them ridiculous This guy was trying to convince the world that Antifa are the true evil. And he was doing it with the help of his friends who I know their names. Some of them, Mm -hmm. I don't even want to say it because honestly, fuck them. But some of the people that he palled around with for years, either on his Prog Dad account or his YouTube or on his his very serious researcher Twitter handle, Owen Linehan, His friends are some of the worst people around, some of the worst harassment trolls and just vile people on the internet. They dox people. They harass minorities and women for fun. They thought it was amusing, so they kept doing it, and they laughed about it. And Prog Dad was their ally. And yeah, go ahead and just spare me the, the fading couch about some stupid pyramid that they're now trying to smear DHS with, even though DHS didn't even create it. Even the guy who got the DHS grant, he didn't create it. He used it in a seminar unrelated to the funding he received from DHS. Anyway, somehow Owen Lanahan deletes his various videos, makes them private. The Prog Dad persona sort of got memory hold over the years and Somehow he gets back into his very serious researcher costume and he still gets published by the Federalist. And that's just my God. Yeah, I remember when this article got published, there was a lot of backlash, including from us and Mm -hmm. Luke O'Brien, Michael Hayden, people who knew Prog Dad because of his associations. It was honestly just hard to believe that that Colette took him seriously. But somehow or the other, the right needs a guy like this to exist, no matter how ridiculous and wrong he is, they need someone out there preaching about the dangers of left-wing violence and all this to make it seem comparable to what we're Mm -hmm. witnessing on the right, 
when it very much is not. Yeah, that pretty much covers where we're at on this. And thankfully, old Prague Dad was able to take a break from interviewing people like violent white supremacist Paul Nealon to get a new article out entitled Meet the Violent Anarchist Behind DHS's Pyramid of Far-Right Radicalization Scandal. Hmm, big old expose that he put out there. And it's with the Federalist and their obscure funding. And it's Progdad. So, yeah, let's let's take that seriously. Very serious matters. So let's break it down just a little bit and see exactly what guys like Bozell and Progdad are all upset about. It seems that the Department of Homeland Security provided $352,109 in grant funding to the University of Dayton's Prevents OH Counter-Extremism Project. Prague Dad seems to be upset that the grant application features the work of an openly anarchist Antifa-affiliated professor, so he says, named Michael Lodenthal, a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Cincinnati. In 2021, Lodenthal spoke at a white nationalism workshop and an extremism, rhetoric, and democratic precarity roundtable at the university's Social Practice of Human Rights Conference. He gave a talk on extremism, rhetoric, and democratic precarity, which opened with an image entitled The Pyramid of Far-Right Radicalization. In it, he presented this taxonomy of the far right, which implies a pipeline from mainstream conservatism to violent extremist terrorism. He stated, this is the modern far right as articulated by what I think are some smart folks. We have created a tiered system here between mainstream conservative on the bottom, which is falsely called the alt-light, what used to be called the alt-right, which has been abandoned as a term, and when we look at the top, accelerationists and folks who are engaging in violence. Well, I did some digging on this. The chart itself comes from a paper called Understanding Political Radicalization, the Two Pyramids Model, written by Clark McCauley and Sofia Moskalenko. It was published in a journal called American Psychologist in 2017. And reading from the abstract, recent criticism of the concept of radicalization has been recognized, leading to a two pyramids model that responds to that criticism by separating radicalization of opinion from radicalization of action. Security and research implications of the two pyramids model are briefly described, ending with a call for more attention to emotional experience in understanding both radicalization of opinion and radicalization of action. So they've separated it because the idea is that just because you're reading extreme material, you may not actually act on it and do extreme things, right? Yeah, exactly. And the reverse is also true. One can do radical things without necessarily consuming the things that we think of as radical. And I know I mentioned this at the beginning Mm -hmm. and didn't really explain, but I personally kind of hate these graphs or pyramids that people put out there because they are, they are vaguely helpful and they're not incorrect, but they're very easy to misconstrue or interpret them as something that they're not. I don't know anything about Michael Lodenthal. I I don't really care. He may be doing great work being an anarchist, whatever (laughs) his personal beliefs are. It doesn't mean he's prone to violence in any way. Don't even know if that's real because, again, it comes from Prague Dad. But all I know is, is the right is mad because... Well, they're always mad. Yes. Um, But they've made DHS into a boogeyman for them to beat up on. It's like the little brother of the FBI that they just keep (laughs) stealing his lunch money on the playground. Whether it's Chris Krebs uh, fact-checking Trump in 2020 about voting machines or the DHS disinformation board, the right is pretty consistently having a field day with DHS and... Of course, they're part of the deep state and they hate Trump, so DHS bad. And Fox News was also up in arms about this story. Well, because of course. They write, Among the organizations and movements displayed on the pyramid were the Republican Party, the Heritage Foundation, the American Conservative Union, Fox News, Breitbart News, National Rifle Association, Prager University, the Tea Party Patriots, Make America Great Again, or MAGA movement, the pro-police Blue Lives Matter movement, and the Christian Broadcasting Network. 
The pyramid also included hate groups like the base, a neo-Nazi paramilitary group, and the Daily Stormer, a pro-Nazi publication, seemingly comparing them to mainstream organizations such as the GOP. Yeah, to some extent, it does sound like a, a hit dog hollering. And the idea that there are, there are no extremists or extreme ideas in even some of the normie Republican conservative groups is just not true. Nope. It's 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 just not true. And, and they don't want to accept that or face that. Um, and they're not not everybody watching Fox News or everyone that wears a MAGA hat is some kind of radical like, extremists but do they believe and normalize and kind of laugh off some pretty extreme ideas yeah i think i think they do and it, and if you remember i know we talked about this the case of of ricky schiffer who attacked an fbi office in cincinnati with a nail gun and then he led police and federal agents on a chase that led to a six-hour standoff he eventually pulled a gun on the cops and was shot and killed. In his own words, taken from social media posts on Truth Social, he said, no, there won't be a red wave just like there wasn't in 2020, talking about the 2022 election. He said, no one has stopped election rigging. I do not expect to save America. I do expect to die trying. Hmm. And we don't know what... Ricky Schiffer's media appetite was. We don't know who, who he was listening to specifically, but it's not difficult to see a guy like that starting as a normie Fox News viewer and making his way up, up, up the pyramid until he was listening to people who told him that he must act. Oh, gosh, it sounds like you're saying he saw no political solution. Do any of the groups on this list ever say anything along these lines? Can can we say all of them? Some <laughs> at this point, I, some are a little more overt and and clear and really put it out there in force. But even some of the the normies are well, yeah. All politicians are corrupt. The Uniparty doesn't care about you. It, it's all we're gonna vote for Trump because we have to destroy the administrative state. You see that on the lowest tier, the least extreme tier. It's still kind of an idea that's getting pushed out there. So it is a fairly common and growing sentiment among GOP politicians and voters. And when they're not openly calling for civil war, <laughs> which they've been doing since 2016, they are... Honestly, at the very least, they are not telling people to slow down or stop or reconsider these ideas. The lines on this pyramid, if we are going to take it at face value, do tend to blur a lot. But when you hit the right nerve, whoever's listening goes looking for more. They go deeper down the rabbit hole and people went deep into QAnon for similar reasons. But see, it doesn't matter what anyone on the right says because Antifa is always worse. Yes, the ever-present Antifa boogeyman. Always always there, always lingering. They never can quite catch that guy, can they? Nope, nope, can't catch him. <laughs> weird. Uh, weird, yeah. Michael Lodenthal, though, he did respond to Fox's outrage with the following statement. He said... Quote, this chart is meant to show that what is termed the right is not monolithic and that some individuals travel to a path of radicalization, beginning with more mainstream sources. This point is not controversial, nor is it deterministic. It is not meant to imply engaging with level one inherently leads to level four. That would obviously be false, unquote. And... Yeah, I agree. That's definitely not controversial, or at least it shouldn't be. Nope. We've <laughs> we've seen it many times, and we cover this on almost every episode. It, we look at people who start down the pipeline from ostensibly mainstream right-wing sources, and occasionally, with the right set of circumstances, they do end up doing what Ricky Schiffer did. 
Yeah, I mean, there was also the case of Cesar Sayak, who pleaded guilty in March 2019 to mailing 16 improvised explosive devices to 13 targets around the country, including 11 current or former U.S. government officials in the weeks prior to the 2018 congressional elections. Now, Sayak had some clear mental health issues, but he wasn't a member of Adam Waffen. He wasn't a neo-Nazi terrorist, and he still ends up building these bombs. He still intended to commit violence. And the Adam Waffen folks aren't the ones posting on Truth Social or the Donald, which is where these guys are getting it. Yeah, people on the right get radicalized. And it's not often as, as straightforward as any chart or pyramid, but we know it happens. The GOP knows it happens. Brent Pazell has personal experience with this with his own son. But we're not supposed to talk about all that. Nope. It's not a conversation they're ever willing to have. And we haven't even looked at the other groups on tier two of the pyramid, such as the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers. Yeah. <laughs> tier two. And they were still recently convicted of seditious conspiracy to overthrow the government. Weird. <laughs> yeah, I can see why people who portray themselves as mainstream might not want to touch that. And let's talk for a second about how DHS keeps naming violent white supremacists as the number one terror threat. We saw a series of arrests recently of people who were planning to destroy power grids all over the country, and most of them were subscribers to that ideology. Yeah, and that's another reason they hate DHS, because they keep <laughs> they keep saying, yeah, violent white supremacists are likely to carry out lone wolf attacks on power grids or to drag shows or all these favored right-wing boogeymen. Mm -hmm. And it does make sense for DHS to spend money to try to find ways to mitigate what they view as a critical threat. Just like it makes sense that people who are part of that critical threat group, or at least mm -hmm. that is part of their audience, are, are they're really, really upset about that. And they've been using the same language to describe DHS now as they've been using to describe the FBI for the last five years. Yeah, and we can debate the idea of whether the DHS model is the right way to go at this point. Uh, reasonable people can have a conversation about that. But these aren't reasonable people. So... I guess the question is, do, do you think putting all of this together, do you think there might be some ulterior motives involved? Well, hard to say for sure, but like you said earlier, hit dogs will holler. Well, speaking of other things that aren't as they seem, we have a bombshell, a bombshell, a bombshell <laughs> report. <laughs> oh, this is my very, hmm, oh, very get ready ones. for war, folks. Uh, there is a report from Republicans on the very serious House Oversight Committee that delved into the vast and far-reaching Biden crime family, whose shady overseas deals include corrupt oligarchs and authoritarian regimes the world over in places such as Saudi Arabia, Azerbaijan, Panama, China, Turkey, the UAE, the Philippines, they even tried to build a hotel in Rush. Uh, 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 wrong guy. What? You're thinking of the other guy. Ah, that's right. No, that's right. My bad. Last president. Yeah. Not the current yeah, president, yeah, the last yeah. president. The, the orange guy. The right, orange right. one. Yep. No, I get I get those mixed up because it's it's definitely the same. No, yeah, it's not the it's same. Okay. It's okay, so do they. Worse. So do they. Yeah, yeah. It's just... I don't know. Have you seen the things that maybe were on Hunter Biden's laptop? Oh, everything was on Hunter Biden's laptop. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't actually done with my list of locations for the other guy, but you're right. That that was that was Trump. Um, I'm sorry about that. No problem. It's okay. So what's the story being floated about Joe Biden's corruption? Charlie Kirk. No, you can't. You got it. You got Joe Biden's corruption. So what's the story being floated about Joe Biden's corruption? That's better. It's, you got to take it serious. <laughs> okay. so. Charlie Kirk said it's worse than Watergate. So it must definitely be real and definitely must be proven already. Right. Uh, I, I swear they have a worse than Watergate every week. It's, <laughs> it's quite remarkable. <laughs> Watergate was a parking ticket compared to this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's 
apparently it's a, a tip the FBI received years ago about Biden receiving millions of dollars from an unnamed foreign national. And the tip was investigated at the time. They found no evidence to back up the claim. And the investigation was subsequently dropped with the approval of the Trump Justice Department. But apparently the same story is resurfacing and I don't think there are any new details. They are also swearing that this has nothing to do with the original tip and Rudy Giuliani because they want nothing to do with that creepy old man. (laughs) But all available reporting indicates the Republicans, MAGA, are just bringing the same story back and, and it's recycled and it's even scarier than before. And according to them, that the whole bribery scheme has somehow been confirmed in its entirety. They have presented no evidence, but it is all in their world. It's all confirmed. It's and this proves, I mean, without a doubt, proves that Joe Biden took millions of dollars, probably from the Chinese Communist Party. And now he's a certifiable traitor who must be removed from office immediately. Except about one day earlier... According to them, he was a doddering old man who shouldn't be let outside, and he was being controlled by the shadowy deep state cabal. Yeah, but that was hours, many, many hours before this latest bombshell griff. You you have to keep up with the stories. We know it all changes suddenly because of all the very real and provable facts that have emerged. Right, right. My bad, my bad. <laughs> so how did this story get started up again? Somewhere in a fucking Bannon lab, but no, I. <laughs> it it seems, uh, you know, logistically, realistically, it started with James Comer, the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, issued a statement on June fifth. Officials confirmed that the unclassified FBI generated record has not been disproven, and is currently being used in an ongoing investigation. The confidential human source who provided information about then Vice President Biden being involved in a criminal bribery scheme is a trusted, highly credible informant who has been used by the FBI for over 10 years and has been paid over six figures. These are facts and no amount of spin and frankly lies from the White House or congressional Democrats can change this information. At the briefing, the FBI again refused to hand over the unclassified record to the custody of the House Oversight Committee, and we will now initiate contempt of Congress hearings this Thursday. Given the severity and complexity of the allegations contained within this record, Congress must investigate further. Americans have lost trust in the FBI's ability to enforce the law impartially and demand answers transparency, and accountability. The investigation is not dead. This is only the beginning. It appears this investigation is part of an ongoing investigation, which I assume is in Delaware. The Oversight Committee will follow the the facts and be transparent to the American people with our findings. Right. So... To be clear here, we're blaming the Trump-appointed Attorney General, Bill Barr, and we're also going to hold the Trump-appointed FBI director in contempt for supposedly not releasing an unclassified document and refusing to give up the name of the very real informant who has the goods on Joe Biden. Am Am I tracking this correctly so far? It looks that way, but again, it does keep changing. As of this morning, they gave up on their threat to hold Ray in contempt of Congress. It appeared they could do it and definitely turned out to be a toothless gesture. But they can get a few hours out of the MAGA base with this one. The GOP is really talking up this informant to the FBI. He's worked for them for 10 years. He's received over six figures from the FBI for his tips over the years. They really want you to believe that this person is very serious and very credible. And of course, they didn't hold Ray, the FBI director, Chris Ray, in contempt, despite 
Anna Paulina Luna and others just swearing up and down that it was going to happen mm-hmm. on Bannon's show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they just won't mention that and on to the next thing. Well, we got what we wanted out of it. So they're. Yeah. A media cycle. Several news cycles. <laughs> uh huh. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this informant, we don't know who the hell this person is. We don't even know if they exist. And. We know there was an original tip years ago from someone, but they're also claiming it wasn't, this isn't the same tip. It's a new tip. So presumably it's a different informant. Do they exist? Who knows? And it's of course convenient for Republicans to now say, oh, the FBI won't release the name of this informant. It can't possibly be that the informant doesn't exist or isn't credible or was already investigated and the case was closed. It can't be those things. And why? Well, because the the details of the tip couldn't be corroborated during the Trump years. Hmm. Yeah. So here's, here's what the, the Washington Post had to say. The FBI and the Justice Department under then Attorney General William Barr reviewed allegations from a confidential informant about Joe Biden and his family, and they determined there were no grounds for further investigative steps, according to Rep. Jamie Raskin and other people familiar with the investigation. Raskin revealed the information about the investigation after he and House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer on Monday reviewed a document containing details of the allegation. The document has been at the center of a weeks-long back and forth between the FBI and Comer, who last month sought to force the agency to produce the document via a subpoena. After the two lawmakers reviewed the document in a secure area on Capitol Hill on Monday, Comer announced that House Republicans would still pursue holding FBI Director Christopher Wray in contempt of Congress. Americans have lost trust in the FBI's ability to enforce the law impartially and demand answers, transparency, and accountability, Comer told reporters, except, whoops. Yep. According to people familiar with the investigation who spoke on the condition of anonymity to detail sensitive information, the allegation in the document came to the FBI through the Pittsburgh field office, where Barr had created a channel for allegations involving Ukraine. That included materials Rudy Giuliani, who was then President Donald Trump's personal attorney, had gathered from Ukrainian sources claiming to have damaging information about Biden and his family. The allegation contained in the document was reviewed by the FBI at the time and was found not to be supported by facts, and the investigation was subsequently dropped with the Trump Justice Department's sign-off, according to the people familiar with the investigation. Comer and Raskin offered disparate accounts of their meeting with the FBI. Comer, in a written statement, said FBI officials told the lawmakers that the unclassified FBI-generated record has not been disproven. Raskin said in a statement that DOJ officials signed off on closing the assessment of the information, quote, having found no evidence, unquote, to corroborate the allegations. The FBI did not confirm Comer's account of the meeting, but called his pursuit of a contempt vote, quote, unwarranted, unquote. Quote, the FBI has continually demonstrated its commitment to accommodate the committee's request, including by producing the document in a reading room at the U.S. Capitol, the FBI said in a statement. This common sense safeguard is often employed in response to congressional requests and in court proceedings to protect important concerns, such as the physical safety of sources and the integrity of investigations. The escalation to a contempt vote under these circumstances is unwarranted, unquote. Comer, who is leading the House Republicans' probe into the Biden family's finances, has raised questions about business dealings between foreign entities and Hunter Biden when his father was vice president, but he has yet to unearth evidence of illegal activity or any that directly implicates the elder Biden. He originally sought contempt proceedings because Ray resisted turning the document in question over to Congress in response to a subpoena. Comer said he plans to pursue a contempt vote after the FBI made the document available because the FBI would not give the committee the document, even though it is not classified. So the document didn't say what he wanted it to say, and now he's very mad about it. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. TLDR. Yeah. (laughs) Butthurt. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So that article was published on Monday, June 5th. On Wednesday, Bill Barr came out with a statement that got picked up by the highly reputable outlet we mentioned earlier, The Federalist. Ah. <laughs> Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's basically Barr saying, oh, no, 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 the investigation wasn't closed by me. Barr says he reviewed it and sent it to the U.S. attorney in Delaware to continue the investigation. Huh. What happened then, according to Barr? Well, he, he doesn't say. So he essentially kicked the can down the road and said, quote, don't blame me. (laughs) And the GOP took that statement to mean, sure, the investigation was just continued into Delaware and is still ongoing. And now finally, mercifully, all these years later, we're finally seeing some of the fruits of that investigation. It's all about to go down. Patriots are in control. Patriots are in control. Yep, that's mm-hmm. it. And Barr doesn't actually say any of that. He just leaves a little wiggle room, just enough so it it could be true. It 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 could be true. The FBI has not disproven that it's true, <laughs> so it could be true. And this version of the Republican Party can do a lot of things with could possibly have some truth. Now, the Washington Post reports that Barr and the Trump DOJ closed the investigation. I have no reason to question that reporting. And the reality is Barr could have closed the investigation then and be lying now. We we don't know. But really, all we're seeing with this case is, is some maybes and might bes and did not deny and so on from a supposed source who, again, may or may not exist whom nobody knows the name of and whose credibility, again, if this person exists, is unknown. Oh, and also the whole investigation could have been some harebrained idea that some random Trump supporter (laughs) sent to the FBI as a tip because he read about it on 4chan or the Donald or he did his own research into a QAnon post and came to believe this must be real. (laughs) It, It could be that. And it it got checked out and there was nothing to it and they moved on. <laughs> so that sounds like a lot of words right there to say this is probably nothing. Dressed up as the tiniest something. Maybe. Still, though, as you pointed out in your tweet the other day, we're hearing reports about an Antifa super soldier Biden death squad out there. People like Tara Reid are so frightened by this, they moved to Russia. I mean, what can you tell us about this? I I don't appreciate the sarcastic tone. Okay. I'll work on that. Lots of people, many people are afraid of the Antifa super soldier Biden death squad. Uh, we need, oh, <laughs> that, that, I was going to say we need an acronym, but it's ASS. Oh. <laughs> ASS BDS. Okay. We'll come up with something. <laughs> uh, it's not, that's mm, that's not great. Okay. It's, I mean, okay. I'm, I'm kidding. Fine. I'm kidding. But it really is pretty close to what the right is insinuating or claiming is happening here. So first we had that clip of James Comer that we already played and, and he's still on the story and claiming all sorts of things. Although he doesn't apparently have the balls to uh, hold Chris Ray in contempt. Nope. <laughs> uh, but it's it's gotten even crazier thanks to to other members of the MAGA shit tossing brigade, particularly Lauren Boebert and Anna Paulina Luna. Here's uh, Luna on Steve Bannon's show. You're saying now, so it's connected dots here. They got in a form of, but they also have a mole. So in there's the FBI. This is correct. this is FBI testifying to Comer or talking to Comer talking on the ring. Okay. So we have. In regards to the specifically Biden information, there's a whistleblower and there's a human source, an informant. Okay, so that's separate. Aside from that, there is a mole within the FBI who is leaking information to Hunter Biden and his code name is One Eye. So we have the ongoing investigation into Hunter Biden via the FBI. They have information that they are refusing to give to Congress. They are telling Congress that they have a genuine fear that this individual will be killed if they are unmasked. This is one of their most trusted sources. And while this is all happening, we are finding out that not only is the president, this is not a conspiracy theory. We have evidence. Okay, so now we're also finding out that the man sitting in the White House is basically guilty of national security violations. He's corrupt. Well, 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 hang on. So how do you know he's, from the information you have, how do you know, that's a big leap to say he's guilty. Why do you say that? 
because of the information that the FBI has proving that he has received a five million dollar payment from a foreign national while he was as the vice president sitting basically next to Obama in the White House. And that's in addition to the funding that we're seeing coming out. Yeah, leave all the Chinese yeah. stuff aside. This is totally separate. This is $5 million, and we still don't know the story, whether it's through Romania, from the CCP. That's, but you're saying there's a whistleblower informant, and the FBI is informing Comer and the Oversight Committee that the FBI believes or the informant believes that if their name is exposed, they could be – they, they, they're afraid for their life. They're the afraid FBI, of being assassinated. The FBI told Comer that they were had a credible fear that this individual would be killed if they're unmasked. Wow. So to be clear, the FBI released a statement claiming that they're afraid their informant is going to be killed because of what he or she knows about the Biden corruption scandal. No, no, not not exactly. But Anna Paulina Luna says the FBI told James Comer this and Luna, I I guess, overheard this or was told by Comer afterwards or or I I don't really know. And I'm not sure that she's specify. (laughs) I've I've watched far too many clips of her talking about this and I have not I've not seen or heard her specify and Comer won't say, and and then we have the second in command in the House, Majority Leader Steve Scalise, saying that he's heard nothing about any of this. Yes. Um, so freshman Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna wrote on Twitter that she's concerned that the FBI informant in the Biden bribery scheme fears he will be killed if unmasked. Can you confirm whether or not that's true and also just your personal thoughts on it? I don't know about that particularly. Obviously, the members of the committee have been uh, much more involved in the whistleblowers. We have heard some alarming reports about the concerns that some of these whistleblowers that are coming forward are expressing some of the uh, abuse and harassment they've been getting from the agencies. Look, they're a whistleblower. Weird that he hasn't heard about this one. Sounds like a pretty significant story to be unaware of and... It's almost like he doesn't want to talk about this because it's crazy and made up weird. Almost, almost. But it got even weirder when Luna added the detail about the supposed whistleblower at the FBI. So we have the informant who's going to take down the Biden crime family. Okay. (laughs) And we have a whistleblower at the FBI who's leaking to Hunter Biden But this is not your ordinary, normal whistleblower. (laughs) Oh, one eye is leaking to Hunter Biden on behalf (laughs) of the deep state. Sounds super concerning. Does the Biden family's corruption know no bounds? Apparently not. It's just, what has this country come to? And I, I have, again, listened to Luna talk about this far too much in the last couple of days, but she's been on Fox News repeatedly. She's talked to Steve Bannon, to Charlie Kirk. <laughs> Apparently my brain, Charlie Kirk and Tucker are the same person. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Charlie Kirk has better production values now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is very true. Okay. Harsh but fair. <laughs> She's talked to Steve Bannon, to Charlie Kirk, to Tim Pool, and others in the in the MAGA media space. Luna consistently claims the FBI informant who has information that's going to bring down the Biden family. Well, she says the informant fears for his life. Everyone who she talks to asks, well, who's the informant afraid of? Where's the threat coming from? And they're, of course, baiting her into saying it's from Joe Biden and his Antifa super soldier death squad. She won't say that out loud, but she certainly isn't denying it either. Mm. The implication is very much there. It's yes, MAGA definitely thinks Joe Biden is going to kill this person because the informant can hurt Joe Biden. But as far as we know, at least at the time of recording, The only House Republican who's come out and said anything like that is Lauren Bobbert, correct? That's correct. Fear for this informant's life. Well, 
the Biden That's family, crazy. Joe Biden, the big guy in particular, are who we are going after with these documents in this $5 million criminal bribery scheme. Uh, so that's pretty telling, uh, very alarming, I, actually, it, if it, the president of the United States is whom he fears. Yeah, it, it, it certainly is. You know, I, I Bobbert is a ridiculous person, but she's also a member of the House Oversight Committee. So even if it's an absurd lie, that automatically lends her some credence in the media. Yeah, unfortunately it does. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Here we are. It shouldn't, but it Here does. we are. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the question becomes, what's the point of all this? Usually when there's a lot of smoke, you'd expect a fire, but this time I'm thinking we might be dealing with a smoke machine instead. <laughs> so here's the, the Washington Post again attempting to... God bless them on this one. They're trying to maintain some sanity about the supposed informant who's going to bring down the Bidens. They wrote, we should approach this claim with extreme skepticism. The document Republicans are requesting is a form the FBI uses to record unverified tips. The FBI stressed that in its response to Republicans, quote, the FBI regularly receives information from sources with significant potential biases, motivations, and knowledge, including drug traffickers, members of organized crime, or even terrorists. Recording the information does not validate the information, establish its credibility, or weigh it against other information known or developed by the FBI. Literally anyone can mm -hmm. send in a tip to the FBI about anything. Mm -hmm. It could be the craziest fucking thing you've ever heard of. They could still send it to the FBI and it is not a crime. Just sending a tip is not a crime. Nope. And the WAPO article added, Republicans have spent a year investigating the Bidens and have come up with no evidence of a pay to play scheme involving the president. The White House points out that Biden released 25 years of tax returns when he was running for president. Naturally, Republicans are really mad at the Washington Post for all this reporting. Naturally. But finally, we get to the point of why. Mm. Why are they doing all this? It seems pretty clear to me that Republicans... Uh, <laughs> I want to refresh my browser right now because <laughs> it's, it's pretty clear that Republicans think Trump's indictment related to the classified documents case is imminent. It's coming. It may have already happened by the time we release this episode or the next time I yep. click refresh. <laughs> and <laughs> these these charges could be much more significant than the case brought by Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. We don't know that for sure, but the potential is certainly there. And with that coming, MAGA needs a distraction. They need a way to make Biden look just as bad as Trump. They need content to push out that's not about all the awful things Trump has done. They don't want to talk about how little regard Trump has for the Constitution, democracy, or rules and laws about classified information. He doesn't think rules apply to him. He doesn't care. Uh, but he's still the front runner for the GOP nomination once again. And still, Joe Biden is, is definitely worse because he's so damn woke. Uh, so here's a story about how awful Joe Biden and his corrupt family is. And it just so happens to come to a head the same week that Donald Trump is facing at least one criminal indictment. <laughs> Funny how that works. You might call it a conspiracy theory if they didn't do this literally every time there was a Trump scandal when he was president. Yeah, this is pretty textbook from them. It's the first play in the playbook and they keep using it because it still works for them. They're not going to stop. Because there's no reason for them to. Absolutely correct. Trump did nothing wrong, as he himself said on Truth Social recently and repeatedly. <laughs> More than once. We tweeted about this, and here's, here's mm -hmm, another and mm -hmm. another and another real post from Trump on Truth Social where he's either saying he did nothing wrong or he's promoting the show, one or the other. We're really not sure which. <laughs> And he, he said it to Maggie Haberman. And I think since we did that tweet, he's posted it at least one more time. Mm -hmm. He he's certainly says he did nothing wrong. So thanks for the publicity, Orange Man. <laughs> Indeed. So here's a couple of quick takes on a couple other stories that we're currently watching. 
Oh, yeah, I really didn't want to watch that blurry mess, but uh, I guess we have to mention the triumphant return to the broadcast airwaves. Is that what we're calling live streaming from your basement on Twitter now? (laughs) Uh, Well, it's America's sweetheart, Tucker Carlson. He released his comeback video for his new series, Tucker on Twitter. (laughs) Tucker on Twitter. Twitter. I'm going to slip into something more comfortable. Uh, (laughs) Which was actually a 10 minute clip shot from an unfinished set, which may have been in his basement, may have been in the bathroom, (laughs) may have been in a... (laughs) And <laughs> it definitely didn't look like it was shot in the Fox News studios there. No, no, it did not. It did not. And he did not look excited to be there at all. Yeah, every podcaster out there watched it and cringed at the low production values. And the best part is that, according to Axios, he may have breached his contract by doing this. Well, Fox News certainly thinks so. And their general counsel sent a letter to Tucker's lawyers on Tuesday stating that opinion. Yeah, you know, it's it's really sad when bad things happen to good people, but that's certainly not the case here. So it's going to be fun to watch the lawyers <laughs> slug it out on this and think about the massive legal bills being run up. Best, best of luck to uh, both sides. Let them fight. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of bad people, it's, again... Welcome to the Speaking of Bad People podcast. It seems that the Republican Party in Texas doesn't really have a problem, or at least they don't want to say they disagree with the beliefs of Mauricio Garcia, who was the neo-Nazi who committed a horrific mass shooting in Allen, Texas last month. Stephen Monticelli, writing for the Texas Observer, reached out to 15 elected officials who represent constituents in Allen, requesting comment on the fact that the shooter held hateful views and was part of a broader pattern of far-right mass murders. Guess how many responded at all? Uh, Ten. No, only four. Only four? Only four. Now, guess how many condemned it? Uh, Hopefully all four. (laughs) You sweet summer child. One. Ah, just one. Uh, Wow. Only one condemned the Allen shooter's beliefs without equivocation. Oh, but it's Texas, so it it was a Republican, right? No, actually, it was the one Democrat. What are you gonna do? Uh, why, why, why won't they? Why won't they take a stand? Why won't they say something? I don't know, you know. But I really think it ties in with what we talked about at the beginning with the DHS report. Yeah, I. No, I think that's true. I think they've convinced themselves that even condemning these horrific beliefs by a horrific person is them somehow owning it or opening themselves up to smears. And I think that's something they, they learned from Trump Mm -hmm. and they have taken to heart. So they just ignore it. But as we know, ignoring this won't make it go away. It won't make these beliefs be any more common or prevalent and it's not going to stop the violence. No, no, it will not watch the feet as a friend of mine always says. Thanks for listening to the Did Nothing Wrong podcast. If you want to hear more, you can go to didnothingwrongpod.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at James, the word four, and the letter M, all one word, and Grizza, B-J-J, G-R-Z-A, B-J-J, as well as D-N-W pod. Thanks again for tuning in. And remember, everyone mentioned did nothing wrong.